How's it going, Cast King fans? Welcome back to another video. I am Cast King Pro Team member Ethan Preston. Welcome back to my series, Outdoor Living with Ethan. And today, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about a rod, specifically in the Cast King Spirali lineup. I want to talk to you about it because one, I think it'll help you catch more fish, and two, I believe, is like a Swiss Army knife of, of rods where you can do multiple techniques just with one rod and reel combo. If you're not familiar with that rod, this is the Casking Spirali 7.4 Medium Heavy. Okay, this is one of the one of the five uh, rods that Cliff Crochet, Major League Fishing Pro, designed. Um, we're going to get into some specifics about this rod, what makes it a little bit different than the other rod lineups, and then my favorite. I want to talk to you about why I believe this will help you catch more fish, and why I think this rod. It's kind of like I said, a Swiss Army knife of rods. Because this rod and reel combo, if you're looking to buy one rod and reel combo to do multiple different techniques, this is the one for you. Three of the five rods use a new Torre High Strength IM8 Graphite Blank. The other two use a proprietary 7030 complex composite material that enhances performance with your moving baits. Cliff Crochet and the Cast King design team also incorporated those spiral wrapped guides in creating the Spirali Bass Fishing Rod Series. Increased casting distance and sensitivity, the Cast King Spirali Rod lineup have a spiral wrapped micro air guide. So your guides start above the reel and wrap all the way around. Incorporated this is an American Tackle G2 edge casting reel seats. Also in this lineup, they incorporate a triple A cork handle for comfort and sensitivity. In the Cast King Spirali lineup are those five rods. Three of them are, are graphite blanks like we talked about. And those are 7.3 heavy, 7.6 heavy, and 7.8 hextra heavy. The ones we're talking about today are made of the 7030 composite. Those are seven foot medium heavy and seven four medium heavy. Okay, this is the rod I wanna to talk to you about. It's the seven four medium heavy moving bait rod. This is why I believe it's gonna be a Swiss Army knife for you, okay? The last couple of years I fished the Bassmaster Opens as a co-angler, we're only allowed, at the time we're allowed six rods basically is what you could bring in the boat. So I didn't have the opportunity to bring a square bill rod, chatterbait rod, and spinnerbait rod. That's three rods that already takes up half my arsenal. So what I would do is bring this rod and reel combo right here, okay? This is what I have. This is a Casking Bassinator Elite bait casting reel. It's a six six to one. Pretty predominant is what I'm using for my moving bait rods. I run anywhere from 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon. A lot of the times I just ran 15 because I didn't, obviously, spinnerbaits, chatterbaits, stuff like that, you're fishing around cover. So 15 pound, the Cast King 100% covert fluorocarbon, that's what I would use on this setup. Versatility is exactly what I want to talk to you about the rod series. Um, I have an underspin on this one here, but underspins, chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, crankbaits, small crankbaits, square bills, 1.5s, even up to your middle range, say seven, striking 7XD crankbaits, something like that, all can be used on this rod. So if you're looking out to just get a rod combo that you can use for multiple different things, this is what um, I would definitely look at for your moving bait setup. Now, this year, new to my lineup, I've been running the 7.4 Pair G2 um, heavy rod for a buzz bait. This year, I opted to went and bought another one of these uh, rods, and I'm going to be running a buzz bait on this for the simple fact that I want to see if this will increase my hookup ratios. And so far this year, it has hookup to land ratio with a buzz bait. It allows the fish to catch that bait better. Let me talk about this. Okay, we have a buzz bait. Okay, obviously most people know the wind showing you right here. This thing is going to go ahead and buzz across the water. When we are talking about a moving bait setup, what I what you need to understand is that you want this rod to bend a little bit more. Because when a fish comes up, he opens his mouth and the water vacuum sucks your bait in. That's where you feel that tick, that's where you feel that thump, okay? So if, say this is a spinner bait, buzz bait, whatever, going across the water. As soon as the fish opens its mouth, okay, the bait gets sucked in. If you have a stiffer rod, what it's gonna do is it's gonna slow the, or speed up the kinetic energy from you feeling that bite going up to your rod tip. This, using the 7030 composite, it's going to slow that kinetic energy from the bite. Now you think that's a bad thing, but it's not, because what happens is it allows that fish, when he goes to suck it in, as soon as he opens his mouth and the vacuum starts, you feel that bite. If you have a stiffer rod, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the hook right away, you're gonna catch him on the outside of the mouth, he's gonna flop, he's gonna jump, you're gonna get next to the boat, and then he's gonna spit the hook. 
using a slower action rod. This one has a moderate fast, I believe it is. Yep, moderate fast. What that's gonna do is when the fish goes to open his mouth and suck that bait in, before you feel that kinetic energy at, the, at your rod tip, he's gonna have that sucker deeper in his mouth. And then when you go to set the hook, you're gonna get him on the top of the head, inside of the mouth, not top of the head, inside the mouth, roof of the mouth, or even deeper, depending on how they're eating it. So this will increase your hookup on your moving baits. I have fluorocarbon on most of these rods here besides the one I just showed you with the buzz bait. Fluorocarbon has a little bit of stretch where mono has a lot of stretch, braid has no stretch. I want a little bit of stretch in here when I'm using a moving bait, especially in clear water, anything like that. I'm using fluorocarbon running around that 15 pound. It's gonna, your rod's got a little bit of a bend to it. The line's got a little bit of a bend to it. So that way the fish is catching these baits, sucking it in deeper and increases your hookup ratio. The only reason I am going to a braid for my buzz bait is for the simple fact that I fish this around cover. Lily pads, bull rushes, docks, lay downs, anything like that. I'm putting a buzz bait in cover and stuff like that, getting a reaction strike. So I elect to use braided line. It's the only difference. You can use braided line. There's times in the summer I'll use this setup uh, right here, except I'll swap the reels out and use a braided line if I'm around weeds, like with a chatterbait, uh, fishing around thicker weeds, stuff like that. But for the most part, if I was you guys, I would definitely go ahead and um, start off with a fluorocarbon. And hey, the pros even use fluorocarbon on your buzz baits. This is just my personal preference. So what I believe is a really cool thing, if you don't have the money to go out and buy multiple of these, go ahead and get you just one rod and reel combo and you're gonna be able to do multiple different techniques and be able to swap them out pretty easily, cut them off, tie something um, else back on and be just as productive as you were before. Again, go ahead and check these rod and reels line uh, up on the Cast King website, Tackle Warehouse, and make sure you go ahead and check out all the other videos on the Cascading channel, a lot of cool people doing cool things across the nation and the world. And this is Outdoor Living with Ethan. I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned. We got some more videos coming. The lakes finally opened up two weeks ago. The ice finally got off so we can actually take the boat out and do some fishing. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. Tune in next time.